I'm Andrea Besser, and I'm the director of CAT Projects. CAT stands for Creating Arts and Alternatives Together. Um, internationally, we work with human rights education and non-discriminatory strategies, and locally, we work with community, arts, and vulnerable groups. So for this video, what I want to talk about just for 10 minutes is about participatory methodologies. And we are going through the concept. Then I will use my, my practical example that I'm familiar with. And we are going to talk about participatory theater. Then we're going to do the negative aspects that such an approach might have. A couple of tips about the role of, of a facilitator in these projects. And we will end up with a challenge for you. Starting with the concepts, what participatory methodologies means is actually quite simple. It only means that we will set up the base for a certain group of common people or ordinary people to take an active role and have influential parts in the decisions that concerns themselves. Meaning, instead of a, an expert or a group of experts to dictate or to give voice to a certain group, we're going to open up space for the group to come with their agency, with their potential, with their stories, with their perspectives, with their wisdom and knowledge, and we will integrate this information and this wisdom and this knowledge and these contributions into the results we want to create. And pretty much you can use this methodology to any kind of project, for instance, at the political level, a lot of policymakers are trying to open up and having moments of a debate or consultation with local communities and they build together the new policies. It can also be in research when a researcher actually also talks with the community, decides the, the goals or what to research with the community, decides the methods with the community, and also in, in, interprets or collects the data as well with the community. So as you can see, this can be applied to many, many different fields. But if you are seeing this video, you are probably involved with working with minorities or you are expecting to. So what does this mean exactly when we work with minorities is where I'm going to focus right now. What does it mean when we work with minorities? Minorities as a concept normally means that we work with groups with less power in the society. So groups that tendentially have a lower voice or participate less in the collective and the majority group. So if we think about these groups, such an approach that gives voice to these groups is pretty much appreciated and would bring a different balance and reduce the gap that we might see in the society. But to fully explain you how this works, I will invert the game. So I will start with an example of a non-participatory way of working. I work a lot with theater, so I will use theater as an example. So imagine that I'm a theater director, and I'm working with refugees, and I want to build a play about refugees. A possible way of working would be to do my research, talking with people, figure facts, going through the news, the different narratives, and I will collect a lot of information. I will decide on the goal in the type of theater, write my script, then go to the group, divide the roles, and build with them the play, and then perform the play. This is, of course, a total valid way of working, but is not very participatory in, in the end. It might have a lot of good results. If I'm a really good theater director, I will make a really good story, and eventually I will impact the public in the direction that I want, so it will be efficient. So even if this way of working, it is a quite efficient way of working, it might be not the best possible way of working with these communities. Can you guess why? Pretty much if I'm a white European, I do belong to the group that is majority or the group in power. And if once again will be my voice, my perspective, and my decisions over another group, I keep on somehow oppressing this group and talking instead of them. 
So I'm pretty much in a post-colonialist kind of mindset. And in that sense, I, I would advocate for a different way of doing theatre. And how would we do it if we do it in a participatory way? Then we will gather a group, I will work with the group, we will do a lot of games, exercise, getting to know each other, building the trust, building a team, also experiments with different forms of theatre, maybe with image theatre, maybe just with movements, maybe just with shadows. And then after having a group build, and I feel that the group is working well and is ready, we would sit down, we would decide, are we going to do a play or not? And if yes, what kind of play? What is the topics we're going to address? What is the objective? What is the impact that we really want to have with the play? And then, in a long process, we would test and experiment and come up with ideas and metaphors and images and different scenes, and all this together in a participatory process. Then, in the end, we'll have a play ready, and then we will present this play but we'll make sure that we end the play with a strong conflict, like the climax of the conflict, to motivate the public to interfere, to come to stage, or to start a dialogue with us, to discover alternatives for a complex situation that we want to change. So pretty much what I described right now is the theoretical or the practical approach of the theater of the oppressed that was built or developed, sorry, by Augusto Poal. So, Theatre of the Oppressed is quite an interesting methodology that gives or sets the grounds for participatory theatre. And here we have a scheme of a tree, and this form of theatre is pretty much grounded on strong ethics and solidarity. This is a technique for social change to give voice to the ones that have less voice or didn't have the opportunity to talk and bring their voice forward. And this is the normal elements of a theater, words, sounds, and image, a lot of games, a lot of exercises to stay together, to build the group, to build the trust, but also to experiment, to go away in another level, a symbolic, a more fun and joyful level. We, they also work a lot with image theatre, and then they work with the forum theatre. That was what I just explained a couple of minutes ago. And this form of work can bloom in as well in completely different directions. And this is really interesting, and I will give you a couple of links to Boal's book, and I will also maybe give you as a tip to look for any group that works in your region or maybe in your city. And if you are interested, try to make contact with them and eventually even try to join them in a workshop or in any kind of project they are developing right now. So when we talk about participatory methodologies, I think it was quite clear the advantage that this can bring. But of course, like any other way of working, always has some negative aspects. The main negative aspects of such a methodology is the time it actually takes. It's quite a long process. As you can imagine, if we are directing and we are an experts, we can very fast ta -ta 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 -ta, build everything. But here, we're going to go slowly up and down, forward and backward, and we are going to be very flexible and have this work with the group for a longer time. So if you have constraints regarding the time, you might have to decide to do just a half participatory methodology. You eventually will have to shorten down some of the process elements to make it on time. Another problem that can come from these sort of or this way of working would be in terms of the role of the facilitator. So it is a little bit more complex to facilitate a group in such methodology. You will have to be very flexible. You will have to be ready for change, change, constant changes. And you will have to be ready with the correct mindsets to integrate the new information in the work that you have developed. Basically, the final result will not be what you imagine initially, 
will suffer a lot of changes and will be quite unexpected. What is lovely in a way, but can also be a frustrating process sometimes. And of course, when we talk about participatory process, it also implies a certain balance. You are still the facilitator, so you are still an expert until a certain level. So until when do you let the group decide and when do you go and guide the group in a certain direction to ensure the quality? This is pretty much a process and the focus is on the process, but you also want to make a result and you want to ensure that the result has quality. Otherwise, that might have a negative impact on the group itself. So when, when we talk about facilitating in a participatory mindset or approach, and if we are pretty much focusing on the group dynamics and also in mediating the group in order to find the collective decision and not one person decision. And this might be a bit helpful. This is a basic models from Tuckman. And it is basically has identifying the process of a group and the, what he claims or what his research has concluded is that this group has more or less four stages. It starts with the forming when the group gets to know each other, then goes to a moment of storming that has to do with rearrangements, with the different roles and the different places people take inside the group. When you are building in the group, there is always a little bit of storming, meaning that the group here performs not so good. And then if the job is well done, the group enters in the norming, so it starts functioning as a whole and starts being more efficient, and the, this will lead to the main performative part of a group. So basically, as a facilitator in participatory methodologies, you are going to have a very active role in guiding the group in these first two phases. So it is your responsibility to build in the group and to ensure that the group is norming and to ensure that the group is going in the right way. When you feel that the group is finally working as a team, then you can give more space to the group to take more decisions and to do the tasks by themselves because they will have a higher capacity of developing a quality work. Just as a summary, when we talk about the participatory process, it will never be fully participatory or non-participatory at all. Tendentially, we always try to adapt our projects to the needs and interest and information we get from our group. So it will be very hard to do it completely ignoring the group. But also will be very hard to fully open to the group and do not guide the group in any direction. As facilitator, you are always also put a little bit of yourself and a little bit of your own subjectivity. And you are also going to be part of the group itself. But when you say or when you want to work in a participatory methodology, you do change your mindset in order to give as much space as possible to the group to be powerful, to take their decisions, to bring their perspective, and to en enrich your work in a different way that you will never do it or reach by yourself. As as facilitators, we are going to try to shift and give as much space as possible to the group to be active, to participate, to bring their wisdom, to bring their knowledge, and to enrich the work that we are actually doing. And this is the main meaning of a participatory process. And as a challenge right now for you, I would like you to imagine the work you are doing or you are going to start soon and think about how can you make this work more participatory. How can you open more the process for the group to also take an influential part and active role in the decisions? And I will invite you to make the exercise to write three things or three steps you can take to make it more participatory in the future.